I'm not quite dead. Call off the search party. Stop fighting over who gets my stuff. Now, I haven't got a lot of time, so let's tear some Qs, some new As. I've gotten quite a few of them, but uh, a lot of them kind of cover the same area, so I'm going to boil them down into sort of general topics. General topic number one. Where the hell have I been? Well, funny story. My work situation has actually changed pretty dramatically, and as a result, I have about half the spare time that I used to, but exactly as many hobbies. Also, earlier in the year, I finished Slash, and I started a video for her, got about halfway through it, when I inadvertently destroyed her face sculpt, and that part tends to be kind of important. So I kind of had to abort. So if you imagine that five or six months ago there was a Slash video, then suddenly I seem a whole lot less neglectful. Why don't you do daily videos or vlogs? I'm not really trying to be a YouTuber. You might notice I've never asked you to like or share or subscribe or smash any kind of button at all. Uh, this is just something I do occasionally when I want to hear myself talk or I have what I mistakenly believe to be a moderately amusing joke to tell. Um, also, unlike a lot of YouTubers, before I can review something, I generally have to build it from scratch. And I think you would find you got a... Uh, you'd get a much lower rate of output from the likes of, say, Movie Bob if he had to stop and film an entire movie in between reviews. Two, commissions. I'm flattered, I really am, but I barely have time to do the bots that I want to do. A lot of people will ask me how much would it cost to make them a mix master or a scrapper or a slipstream, and I just don't think that number exists that anybody would be happy paying that would motivate me to rebuild those. It is a lot of work. And what sustains me through that work is getting to try out an idea and see if it flies. Like, will this transformation scheme work if I do it this way? Will it look good if I build it like that? Once I already know that, my motivation kind of vanishes. A lot of bots will sit around in the prototype stage for a long time. I mean, like, poor Warpath sat around like this for three months because I knew the transformation worked, but I couldn't be asked to paint it. <laughs> so... Yes, making, say, a second Warpath would obviously take less time, but it would also involve a lot less fun. Uh, so between that and the greatly reduced free time, that's going to have to be a flat no on commissions. Three, sales. A lot of folks want to buy the pieces I've made, and again, very, very flattering. But it's the same thing as commissions, basically. I make these bots so that I can have them. If I sell them to you, then I don't have them anymore. And then I have to make them again. And then we're just back to the same problem as commissions, I'm afraid. Parts. Uh, some people, someone asked me how many perfectly good bots I've been through. And it's a lower number than you might think. I completed 44 bots and have used up around 53. But maybe 10 to 15 of those were junkers who were already missing parts and probably headed for the trash bin if I hadn't saved them. So not all of them were perfectly good. As for where I get them, uh, there's uh, a lot come off eBay. I'm still working through a backlog of ones that I acquired back when you could get them real cheap at the likes of Marshalls and TJ Maxx. And then every now and then a well-meaning friend will offload some or all of their animated collection, although that's been happening less and less, and um, parts fodder figures are getting more and more expensive and hard to come by. Uh, so it's a good thing I've done pretty much everybody. Terror cons. No, I'm not making any more Terracons. I had like half an idea for Ripper Snapper, but that's it. And I'm not sure why I get asked this so often. I made Blot because he's in the comic, not because I came up with the idea. I, I didn't come up with the idea. The animated aesthetic is actually not a very natural thing for me to create in. I can build it, but I can't make it up. I mean, just look at the difference in quality between the Derek Wyatt designs and some of the ones I've made that aren't based on Derek Wyatt designs, like Crasher or Scylla or Flame War. There's, there's a noticeable gulf in quality, and I'm okay admitting that. Technobots. No, I'm not going to finish the all-girl Technobots. Uh, for one thing, Combiner Wars came along and rather devalued the novelty of having a complete combiner team. Uh, but also, the first two didn't really come out all that good. I'm not very happy with them. And the bots that I wanted to use for Laura Lightspeed and Scatterdot have become insanely expensive. Are you going to do so-and-so? Much like every 90s X-Men character, I made a list a long time ago. This is when I was working on Scrapper. And it was every bot on the show who did at least two of the following three things. One, 
Say something. Have a line. Even if it's just... Two, show us your alt mode. Three, do something. Throw a rock. Lick red alert. Do something. Four, be wheeljack. This one is worth double points. And that list came out to, on the Decepticon side, Slipstream Thundercracker, Ramjet, Dirt Boss Mixmaster Scrapper, Stryka, Spithor, and Cyclonus on the Decepticon side. And then Brawn, Red Alert, Hotshot, Perceptor, Wheeljack, Alita One, Warpath, Highbrow, Omega Supreme, and Grandis, and arguably Sorry on the Autobot side. And of all the names on that list, the only ones I haven't done are Alita One, Grandis, and Omega Supreme. Uh, I have been working on an Alita One. I've been trying to do that for ages, but I'm stubbornly insisting on using the Alita, the uh, Black Arachnia mold. And she's not really helping very much. Uh, so that one's kind of going nowhere slowly. Um, I do actually have a design for an all-in-one, non-parts-forming Grandis, but it's a massive, massive scratch build, and I'm just not sure I want to give up that much time and energy and shelf space to a guy who, at the end of the day, is a big, fat dweeb. If I wanted a big, fat dweeb in my collection room, I'd just go in there. And Omega, um, I just don't like Omega Supreme. I've never forgiven him for wiping out all the best Decepticons back in issue 19 of the original comic. I mean, seriously, who is this prick that he thinks he gets to show up and drop Starscream without even giving him a line? Treating Decepticons as disposable is the quickest way to put me off a piece of Transformers fiction, and while that isn't technically animated Omega's fault, still not going to build him. I have gotten a lot of good suggestions, and I've been pondering them a, a, a few of them, but we're pretty much out of show characters at this point, so I'm going back into kind of making just random characters and fembots that appeal to me, or a few ancillary characters from the comics. So there's been suggestions for Roulette and Shadow Striker, Flare Up, Vilch, Crumple Zone. Uh, Wake Angel had a great idea for Quick Shatter that I'm extremely tempted to steal. Lockdown as Crasher, who you will see here very shortly, was a comment suggestion. Um, so you never know. But that that's that was where the that was the whole master list on who I'm gonna do and and, and where I'm at in that regard. Are you going to do Prime Wars Trilogy Customs? Probably not. I don't really care for the retail product anymore, aside from begrudgingly picking up the Fembots. So I'm not really interested in building anything in that style. It, if I did, it would just be a repaint. I don't really want to get into building that level of detail and geometric precision. Are you going to do any IDW Customs? Style, no. Characters, maybe. I'd love to have a Nautica or an Anode. Will you make non-animated custom videos? Uh, probably not. I did do a few of those, mostly back when I was in my make random fembot spaces. Uh, like, here we have Revenge RC as Night Racer. Uh, probably the most interesting part of that is that Winky Con logo. And then uh, Beast Hunters RC has Sonar. The reason I don't do videos for them is this is the whole, this is it. That's Beast Wars, Beast Hunters, RC, I've painted her as Sonar. Ta-da! That's the whole video. Uh, probably the most elaborate of them is Antagony here, who I like to keep around so Starscream can fail to lead her to picnics. She is just uh, Beast Machines or Universe, I can't remember which, Black Arachnia with some spoons. And if you ever did want to see any of those, like I said, there's, there's not really enough to do a video, but I do have galleries for them on PFW. If you want to go in and search by my name, you'll find them. I think some of them are on the DeviantArt gallery, too. But there's just not that much to be said. Like, I can't really get any particularly clever jokes out of them. There's no musical numbers. I mean, what good am I to you without that? What got you into customization figures? And how can someone like me, who has done simple repaints in the past and never anything to extreme term making your figures out of scrap? What got me into customization was Oil Slick. I'll go get him. What got me into customization was Oil Slick, strangely enough. I had bought a Black Arachnia at retail, and after two weeks of struggling to get her to stand up, I realized she actually had two left thighs. One of them was on backwards. And, uh, and that's why she was having issues. So I sent her back to Hasbro 
And Hasbro, for some reason, sent me oil slick. And this was before I had gone, I wanted to go completionist on the line. So I didn't really want oil slick. And I was kind of looking at him and I was kind of thinking, you know, if you swap that head out, he could kind of pass for a fembot. And so I secured an RC head from online and I made Flame War here. This is number one. This is what got me started. You can tell I didn't really know what I was doing because she's got a glossy finish instead of the usual matte. But um, yeah, I actually had to build a little hinge to get here. Yeah. Build a little hinge to flip around the grill and stow her head in there using just a little bit of styrene. And I, I think the, the pin through there is just a literal pin that <laughs> snapped in half. Uh, but it functions. But I never would have gotten anywhere without the help and support of the guys on the TFW boards. There's a lot of good tutorials on there. Go looking. Uh, and some of the guys in my local groups. So, the, yeah, that's uh, Flame War, number one. And, you know, when I made this, I had no idea that eventually I was going to be doing the likes of Mixmaster on Warpath. Uh, I didn't think I'd be able to ever do that. But it's just practice, practice. You know, get a, contact your local sign shop. See if they have any trash styrene you can play with. Start cutting it, drilling it, sanding it, see what happens. It's all trial and error. That's the big secret. Paint. You should probably talk to somebody else about that. There are way better painters out there. Uh, Floating Cat and Delicious Peter, just to name two off the top of my head. What was it Floating Peter and Delicious Cat? I work mainly in spray paint whenever I can. Uh, mostly I like this Rust-Oleum. It's Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch 2X Ultra Cover Primer and Paint for wood, metal, and plastic, and also plastic. Comes in a lot of colors, goes down fairly smooth. Uh, even the lighter colors tend to have pretty good coverage. I uh, hadn't used Valspar until Slash, but this worked out pretty well also. Uh, but my favorite, when I can get it, is actually the Ace Hardware house brand, but it comes in a total of like three colors. This is uh, where I got the purple for Cyclonus, and I, I don't know where the can is, so I can't show you. But that stuff goes down lovely and smooth, and it's freaking bulletproof. I really can't believe how resilient it is. And then I top it off with this uh, Testor's flat finish uh, lacquer. Gives it that sort of matte finish animated look. Uh, when I have to work in hand paint, which I try to avoid at all costs, I use Liquitex Glossies, not because they're especially great, but they're easy to get and they're easy to work with because they have a flip top so they're easy to mix. You just pour some out, reuse it. Styrene. This is styrene. Actually, it's polystyrene. Regular styrene is a liquid. You've got thick pieces for structure, thin pieces for curvy bits and detail. You can score it, you can snap it, you can sand it, you can drill it. Garden variety rubber modeling cement actually will melt the two pieces together, creating a really nice strong bond. And it's easy to create hinges with. Uh, you can either get styrene tubes at a modeling store or art supply store and use those. You can put the thin tubes into the th thicker tubes. That's one way to do it. I prefer to drill a hole and then use Lego, specifically the skinny part off the long whippy antennas uh, it's high-quality plastic, they're cheap to get, and they're very consistent in terms of size. Uh, I'm not planning on doing a whole tutorial thing. For one thing, I'm, I'm not really all that good. If you want to see something, go check out SculptBot's stuff. He was doing Masterpiece Dinobots back before Fans Toys was even a thing. Uh, the only tip that I really came up with on my own that I can pass on is that if you're trying to get a nice square, right angle, or corner... Uh, you can use a six-sided die as an easy tool to line that up. I did get one more question. What's the hardest part of doing a Q&A video? It's coming up with an ending.